Hello, all sentient beings, and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast, where we talk about all things related to the Transformers. I'm your host, Jeremy, and in this special episode, I sit down with David Wallace from TF Nation, one of the people behind their big broadcast of 2020 online event. We talk about how they had to adjust in the midst of uncertainty in the world, how they came up with the big broadcast, and some of the benefits and drawbacks of doing an online-only event. Enjoy. Welcome to another uh, Transmissions special. This is going to be all about the big broadcast of 2020. Uh, I have with me David Wallace, who is part of the um, the TF Nation, I guess, planning committee, or I don't know how, what your organ. I, I think my uh, general, my actual title is just General Dog's Body. Okay. I, I think. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm part of the committee that uh, organizes uh, TF Nation and this year is organizing the big broadcast. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for coming on to talk about it. Oh, thank you for so, having me. Yeah. So I mean, we're, we're always you know talking about uh, the TF Nation announcements and it's one of those conventions that we're all kind of aspiring to, you know, make our way over there at some point to experience <laughs> in person. But um, it, you guys were shaping up to have a, a pretty nice uh, convention this year when the world kind of went crazy and everyone got, got sick. Yeah. 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 You can say that again. Um I I won't go into too many specifics, but what I will say is is that um, just in terms of the planning and organizing for what would have been 2020 show, we weren't just talking 12 months in advance. I mean, yeah. the the planning for this year's show, with it being our fifth anniversary, had literally been in the planning stages since we started doing the convention five years ago. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and, sure, then, like, and then things booking went guest wrong. Is not, booking guests is not like a year out thing. You're probably booking, you know, a couple years out because their schedules are so busy. Well, I mean, that's it. You know, it's every guest is different and you have to treat every guest uh, as an individual and things like that. Um, ultimately, there's so many things that you have to consider when when looking at a guest lineup. Um you know, not just a case of are, are they free? I mean, that's obviously the most important thing. Um, but you know, what what year is it? What what are you theming your convention around this year? What which is kind of something we've done mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to sort of fall into the trap of celebrating the stuff that we're a fan of and excluding uh, people who are fans of other parts of the franchise, right? You know, so you've always got to have these thoughts in mind about trying to cater to the the widest demographic possible. Um, but you're right. Yeah, sometimes you can be in talks with a guest for several years, you know, and it might it might just be a case of the year that this guest wants to come that, uh, you know, it's not the right year for X, Y or Z. But yeah, so. I and and that's just the guests. That's not mm -hmm. even everything else that you have to consider when putting one of these shows on, right? And um, man, we've seen like TFCon has had to cancel two two shows due to the pandemic and stuff, and other shows. Um, like there, there's one as we're recording right now. There's one in Washington State that's they've gone to streaming just panels and stuff and. It seems like what you guys are doing is, is one of the most ambitious ones I've seen uh, specifically, like, I guess for a, a niche like this. I mean, you know, San Diego did their Comic-Con at home stuff recently, but um, that's just kind of catering to the general, you know, geek culture, I guess. But um, what, like when, when you were deciding to, to do this transition, kind of what, um, problems were you running into and you know because i see you've settled on twitch as as your platform um did you look at other like other platforms yeah we we did like that that's the thing is none of us uh in the committee had any idea what we were doing right you know it's like it's it's one thing to turn around and say <laughs> you know if you look at it just from running a con for uh 
a, a few thousand people versus streaming on the internet you know you would think one is more challenging than the other and it certainly is but when you don't know anything about streaming on the internet um then you run into some problems and yeah. so because this was in part my idea and i kind of sort of said to in my usual flairish way said <laughs> don't worry about it it'll be fine I had to very quickly start getting up to speed with how to stream on the internet. Uh, why did we choose Twitch? We chose Twitch because um, the software and the features that it allowed us to have seemed to be more robust. It's mm -hmm. it's a dedicated streaming platform. Other yeah. places do it. YouTube, YouTube certainly got the numbers. Um, you right. know, there is a there is an inbuilt community within youtube there's not an inbuilt community within twitch i've had a look at it and i think in terms of transformer streaming on twitch you've got the mobile game they do a, a stream on there yeah. uh and uh casey uh yeah does, he just started doing some yeah art streaming and things like that and that seems to be about the sum total of it i do apologize if yeah. Obviously, everybody's listening to this and going, I stream on Twitch about Transformers. <laughs> right. Like, you know, but um, but yeah, that was it. So it, it, it's it's checks and balances. It's like, right, this is what we want to accomplish. This is what we want to do. Let's try this. And of course, when we started doing this, this was long before anybody else, before San Diego Comic-Con announced they were doing anything or all of these uh, other cons which have been streaming. So there was also no basis yeah for how to do it and so we settled on an approach and that was that, that's basically what we've run with um well, one of the things that i think that's really cool that you guys have been doing and i guess this is more just to work out all of the the problems ahead of time you've been doing these tfn live streams um you know periodically and um using that to kind of like do your announcements and um, I think that that's a really good idea to work out, you know, any major problems that you're going to run into. I mean, I'm, I'm sure the day of the guest, you know, you're going to have internet hiccups and things, but this, that was a, a really good decision, I think. Yeah, it was. And it was, it was partly driven by the fact that we needed to get familiar with everything and we right. needed to get familiar with the software, but at the same time, it was also one of the, the big issues that we had was, um, again, trying to build up that that base of get people who've never been to Twitch in their life to go to Twitch. Right. You know, it, it's, it's one thing for us to turn around and say, oh, we're streaming on Twitch. But, and look, I'm in my late 30s. If, if, a, if somebody on the internet says, oh, you need to come to here, and do this to enjoy this that's immediately a barrier to entry for me you know right yeah. i'm sure there's plenty of people out there who go oh no i'll I'll go wherever like you know it, it's cool but you know like i say i'm in my late 30s i still don't know what tiktok is like <laughs> yeah despite the fact that it's apparently getting banned i don't know what it is so doing it on twitch trying to get people over there um and the only way to do that is to be consistent so every monday wednesday and friday uh, with the exception of one one day when when things just didn't go well, um, we've been streaming for like the last several months, doing different kinds of content. Um, again, just to tell people, look, we're here, we're reliable. You can believe that we're going to deliver, uh, and also this is what we're going to deliver on on August fourteenth and fifteenth. That's that's great. So. Um... I know that the, the the guest lineup that you guys have for the big broadcast is um, it's different than what you were planning on for the in-person show. Um, did you find these guests were receptive? I mean, I'm sure some of them are more technical than others. And like, I've, I've seen a few um, on other streams like Greg Berger. Um, I saw him on a stream with some other voice actors a few months ago. Uh, but I mean, did you did you get any resistance from the guest side, or were they kind of on board with what you're planning on doing? No, I I, th I think for the most part, 
Um, there was a few, there's a few technical hiccups to work through and things mm -hmm. like that. But for the most part, the, the guests were incredibly respect, uh, respectful and, and, uh, you know, very willing to come on board and do it because, you know, you've, you've got to remember, like at the end of the day, um, if, if we were to bring a guest over to a con, uh, that, that guest wants paid. Right. At the end of the day, it, it, it's a business transaction for them. You know, they, they don't do it for free, and nor should they. They're, they're professionals. Um, so now what you're doing is you're saying, hey, do you, do you want to come along and do this thing and do it for us? Uh, and some of these people we've had over, so we've got a business relationship with them and a personal relationship as well in, in some instances. And it's a case of, you know, do you want to come over and do you want to do this for us essentially free? Um, and they've all been really, really gracious in regards to that. And what it's also afforded us is the chance to reach out to people that we've not had over before, who, as I mentioned before, for one reason or another, it's not been possible to get them over. Right. And, and they've been gracious as well. Every single person that we've reached out to, uh, has, has basically come back and, and either said, you know, yes or no which even in that is a a step you know and it's purely it can be a case of conflicting schedules because most voice actors are still working right. even though there's yeah. a pandemic going on uh, most writers are still writing even though there's a pandemic going on so for them to be able to do that is is fantastic for us right. and hopefully fantastic for the audience who get to see it yeah and, and i'm sure it it's like you said you're able to get some people that you've never been able to before. I mean, right now, international travel is pretty much shut down at least from it to and from the U S and that's where, you know, the majority of these guests are, are based. So, um, being able to, I guess, talk to their fans, uh, on this is, is a great opportunity for them because they're used to going to conventions over the summer and interacting with people. Um, so, I guess, can you talk about some of the guests that you got this year? Um, I mean, yeah, I mentioned sure. Greg Berger, so, but you've got a number of, of G1, but you have, you know, some newer people too, like, like May Cat, who wrote on Cyberverse. Yeah, absolutely. So again, going back to what I was saying before, you know, you want to divide, diversify your, your line as much as possible. You know, I'm of an age where Generation 1 is my thing, Beast right. Wars is my thing. I would be hard pressed to say that the movies are my thing, or that, um, you know, I, I haven't really spoken about this, but but even uh, War for Cybertron Siege is not really my thing. But uh, I, I still want to, uh, and I'm saying that, and I don't, act, we don't actually have anybody from Siege, but that, that's right. pure, that, that, that's not like we're deliberately miss, missing out or anything it's like brand that. New. <laughs> exactly, it's it's brand new and things, um, and we could easily flood it with G1, but, but we didn't. So yeah, we've got people like May Cat who uh, wrote on Cyberverse, as you say, Jeremy Levy, who's played Bumblebee on Cyberverse and in uh, Rescue Bots Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he, he's joining us. Uh, Stan Bush is joining us. Um, now we've, again, we, we've also tried to sort of mix and match it because it doesn't just always have to be voice actors. So, in addition to May Cat, we've also got Flint Dilly, yep. uh, Buzz Dixon. So they were writers for Generation 1, and obviously Flint did an awful lot of work on Transformers the movie. Um, who else have we got? Uh, I'm, this is where We've I'm going to start Peter doing the Spellos blank. From Peter Spellos, RID. Paul Hiding. Um, yeah, like all of these people. And we've been super fortunate to be able to get Corey Burton as well. Yeah, I'm not sure the last time I've, I don't think I've ever actually seen him in person at a convention, but I don't know if he does a lot of conventions. Only time um, you will ever see Corey Burton at a convention is when Disney tells him he needs to come to a convention. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's a, he, he's a very, very lovely man, um, but he is, he is uh, the consummate voice actor. As far as he's concerned, it's the voice um mm -hmm. and yeah he he doesn't he doesn't do conventions um 
because as far as he's concerned, once he's done the voice, it's there. That's the character. It's just confusing if he shows up and says, yeah, I'm I'm this person, you know. Um, and that that's kind of one of the things that we looked at was like we, we kind of sat there when we were originally putting this together and saying, right, what can we not not a case of what can we not do because we're not in person, but what can we do because when we don't have to put a convention on? Uh, what what does the format allow us to do that we wouldn't normally be able to do in person? Well, we wouldn't normally be able to get Corey Burton, right? Okay, so let's try and speak to Corey and try and get him involved. And I'm pleased to say that he's he's a graciously accepted and that that is going to be a, a big thing for us right because it's cory burton man <laughs> like, yeah, i mean you know. you know just even outside of transformers he's had a huge career but oh, um yeah you know he in, in transformers he's shockwave in g1 and um he played megatron and i mean yeah and then he's know, he's less you know every time yeah every time you walk through a disney park you're hearing his voice um he's you know, if you're a fan of Star Wars, you know who he is. If you're a fan of the Clone Wars, um, you know, trying to list off his resume is like trying to list off Frank Welger's resume. It's yeah. a it, it's a foolish task, you know. Yeah, so th this is a great mix of um, of people. Uh, I don't see any comic people, but I'm, I'm assuming you, you are going to have some comic creators on as well. I mean, it would be foolish for me to say that we finished announcing things. Yet. Right. I mean, you still got a couple, weeks, but. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I know yeah. the comics. Um, the comics uh, fandom in the UK is pretty legendary, as you know, you know, being pretty big. So, you know, it would it would be crazy to not have that represented. It would be. It would be very silly, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm not ready to say anything right. yet, but yeah, yeah I, I would say that that would be something you would definitely want at your uh, convention. Awesome. Um, so. TF Nation had a like kind of a pretty innovative thing when when you guys started up with the uh, um you know in addition to your your normal kind of dealer area and artist alley you had a um an area was it called the forge that was like more fan created um place where where they can have have booths yeah yeah, yeah absolutely are, are you guys um, looking at, at doing any kind of um replication of that online or you're just talking about doing these you know these panels and these interviews yeah it's been super difficult to try and figure out a way to match one to one right uh the the, the physical convention um but you know what like we are what we're saying to people or at least this is the message that i, I kind of hope has gotten out there is that the big broadcast isn't tf nation right um, it is being put on by the people who who put on TF Nation, but it, it's a different beast altogether. And ultimately, the the thing that we want people to to come away with at the end of it is, I am a Transformers fan, and this convention or this online show um, serviced me as a fan, and that I. I got something out of it and that my enjoyment of the franchise was, was peaked um, or I, I just enjoyed it because I enjoyed listening to these guests from my mm -hmm. childhood. I, I, we want to celebrate the franchise in the best way that we possibly can. Um, and if that means that, you get to share that experience with somebody. You know, maybe you've got a friend uh, and you guys get on Twitch or you get on um, Skype together and stuff like that and you watch it, then that's what we want. Like, we want people to to come together. Um, and you know what? If you're somebody who who is active in that community, uh, the Forge or whatever it is, then, you know, during that day, like, we would say, you know, put your stuff out there, like get it shown to people. Like, uh, you know, that's kind of the, the thing that we want. We want people to, to be celebrating the work that goes into this community. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again, it's just, you can't unfortunately replicate one-to-one. -one. I mean, I, 
we would love to be able to have dealers involved, yeah. but uh, the, there's a very limited way that you'd be able to do that, you know. Um, and plus, I think for a lot of people who come to these conventions, it's the thrill of buying it in person. You right, know what I mean? it's, it's the, the and back buying. and forth, trying to yeah. get the best deal. Yeah, and we love the Forge. We love the Forgers. Like, yeah. every year I go in there and I'm just blown away by the level of creativity of people. Because I am... I am not creative in the slightest. Like, uh, I, I, I'm very good at running my mouth, but creatively, no, fortunately I work with an awful lot of creative people. Um, and a lot of those people that are in the forge just blow my mind every single year. So it's a shame we're missing out on them. Um, but he is hoping for next year, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, going forward, do you see, doing more big broadcasts like you know after things return to some sense of normality and you're able to have an in-person convention um you know what like in all honesty there hasn't really been a great deal of talk about what post big broadcast is going to be i think there is space for something like this uh in the future Mm -hmm. because we don't know how long everything is going to go on for. Um, we don't know what the lockdown is going to be. So it would be foolish for us to to do one thing and then forget about it and just hope that everything comes about. But right now there's no active plans for the big broadcast part two. Um, but at the same time, I think what we're doing in terms of streaming and getting stuff out there and, and interacting with the fan base um, has has been productive and i think we would be foolish not to not to keep going with that in some form or fashion yeah. um so yeah it's just a case of waiting and seeing to be honest yeah um, i mean I get, you need to get this first one under your belt and you know, see <laughs> yeah, how it goes exactly but yeah. yeah give me give me two weeks and then two <laughs> weeks of bed rest afterwards to de-stress right. from it all and then uh we should be all right yeah uh, i think it's a great idea and if anything it, it helps expand the tf nation brand to like those of us that aren't in the uk that you know you know want to kind of get a taste of what you guys are doing over there yeah um i i mean that's definitely something that we want this is kind of the thing is we want this to be a global interaction between fans i've always found that the transformers community is often very split and factioned um you know for one reason or another these are these are the fans that like this cartoon these are the fans that like these movies uh these are the fans that like the comics these are the fans that that don't like the comics x y or z um and so like i say the goal has been basically to just be like look let regardless of what you're into let's just celebrate it as a franchise Mm -hmm. um because it is to my mind one of the one of the best uh franchises out there and it's it's got one of the best communities out there um and so let's just expand that out let's let's bring our positive take on transformers conventions to the world and if you like it great if you don't like it that's fair enough you know but um but yeah this is what we're doing and every year we try to do something unique and interesting uh and we don't rest on our laurels in the sense of uh doing the same show year after year after year after year um and this is probably the well this is the biggest departure that we've done thus far in regards to it awesome well um you know i guess as we wrap up uh you know i'm i'm really looking forward to checking this out and um are you are you gonna post like a, a schedule of like you know this guest is gonna be on this time closer yeah, to the date yeah. we are um <laughs> A lot of people have been asking that, like, what what is the schedule going to be? And I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, the reason that we haven't got the schedule out yet is because we're like, how do you cram all of this into one day? <laughs> yeah. um, or d- two days, because it's, it's Friday night and Saturday. Um, but we, we will be releasing a schedule once we've tried to figure out maths uh, and tried to figure out how to bend the laws of time. Um, we'll 
we'll definitely have a schedule out there. Needless to say, from the moment it starts to the moment it finishes, it'll be jam-packed. Um, right. And people will have plenty of opportunity to to interact um, with the, the, the community uh, and friends through Twitch and things like that. And, and these will be available to be viewed after the fact as well. Of course they will. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So if you're working that day, you know, don't worry about it. Like, you know, it, it, this is kind of one of the things that, you know, we're, we're saying is that, you know, this isn't, this isn't like San Diego Comic Con where like people tune in to, to hear the latest gossip and things like that. That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you want that Hasbro is doing its pulse Friday pulse stuff. Yeah. Um, and they're doing all of their unveilings and stuff. What we're doing is we're just, we're here to celebrate the community and things like that. And so, you know, if you do, if you do miss it, all you're missing out on is obviously hanging out with other members of the community and things like that, but everything will be available afterwards. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, I guess everyone needs to go to tfnation.com for all the, the most up-to-date info and you have, you know, links there to your Monday, Wednesday, Friday streams and yeah, and everything. absolutely. You can view it on TFN as well. The only thing is, is that you will need to, to sign into Twitch to take part in the quiz that we've got on um, and, you know, to, to join the chat and things like that. But um, yeah, there's, there's links all over the place. If you just type in the big broadcast into Google, uh, you'll, you'll come across it and things like that. Great. Um, I guess, uh, do you have any, uh, any other things you want to, um, let people know, like where to find um, them? Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you want to go to our website, which is, um, TF nation, uh, TF nation.com, you'll get all of the details there and you'll be able to see all of the stuff that we've put on for previous conventions and things like that. Um, and like I say, you'll be able to follow all of the, the links and things. Ultimately, we're just hoping that people will come along on August 14th and 15th and just uh, celebrate Transformers as, as much as we enjoy it as well. Um, and like I say, not everything's been announced. There's going to be a few surprises, a few things that we've got up our sleeves. I think if anybody has been to a, a TFN convention before, you're going to realize that when we do something, we always try to put a little bit of extra specialness into it. Um, you know, whether it be the animated stuff that we've done in the past, the the comic, mm -hmm. or yeah. whether it be the the season four reading that we did last year. Um, there's there's always going to be something special, and I can guarantee you guarantee you that there's going to be something a little bit special this year. That's that's great. Well, uh, thanks for so much for coming and talking with me about this. Um, you know, no, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're so excited to see um, how this goes, and um, you know, we'll be continuing to to talk about it and try to you know get more people interested. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it, Jeremy. All right, great. Well, um, and I guess thanks everyone for listening, and uh, we will talk to you next time on Transmissions. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you again next week.